in the morning, in the morning, in the morning, I will say, this is my morning. Hallelujah. When the sun sets, it's the breaking of a day for other people. When the sun rises in Australia, we here are in darkness. Half of the world is in darkness. And when the sun sets for us, I mean when the sun rises for us, they also go into darkness. The Bible says God divided the climatic times equally. He says in the day man goes out to his work and the beasts, they retreat to their dens, their caves. The lions go back to their lairs getting ready to pounce on the prey, but later in the night. And he says, at night man returns home to rest and the beasts come out to feed. What a wonderful God we serve. He's taking care of every fine detail. If he did it in the first creation, he would do it again and again and again. The new creation is supposed definitely going to be better than the first creation. And we are the new creation. That's why we keep looking on to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He is a champion, our champion. He is our champion because he defeated principalities and powers, made an open show of them, destroyed, <laughs> destroyed hell and took the gates of death and led captivity captive and took gifts of men and gave gifts to men. We have a champion, a champion who is touched by the feelings of our infirmities. He is Lord. He is Lord of heaven. He's Lord of earth. He's Lord of hell. He's Lord of the sea. You know the sea can connote anything, trouble, anything that swallows you up. Any oppressive situation that swallows you up. And he's Lord of the sea. He's Lord of the past. Lord of the present. And Lord of the future. He is king in every realm. And in this realm of earth, he's king of men. He has subdued men everywhere. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Parsha said he would never bow to any god. In fact, the constitution made him a god, and God humbled him, and he wrote a decree. In every land where we have dominion, let it be known that the god of Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, this god Jehovah Yahweh, that they served in the land of Israel, him alone is God, and every man must worship him. And if any man would resist this decree, let them be stoned he and his entire family and his property and let a heap be raised over them as a memorial so every time you pass you say that's that recalcitrant man who would not yield to jehovah's leadership hallelujah he is king he leads us in the dark leads us in the light because when his light shines forth even the sun at 12 noon is rubbish saul of tarsus saw the sun inside of his light Amazing. His light was so bright that the sun that we see became darkness. And he prophesied that the end time is going to be a time when the sun will turn to sackcloth. What is the sun significant of? The sun signifies every leadership, every direction, every source of direction and leadership that you have and is devoid of Christ or outside of Christ. Friends, is a waste of time. Let me tell you the truth. These are the days in which he will frustrate even the, the strong, and he will frustrate the faint-hearted. He will frustrate those that are articulate and frustrate those that are weak-hearted. This is the time he will do it. He's our advocate, instant in the court of heaven, defending your case and my case, making pronouncements for our freedom and liberty, declaring that his mercy has covered us. That's who he is. That's why we recommend him to everybody. Anywhere you are listening to me, whether in China, whether in India, because we have seen texts from places, I mean, as far as that. I'd like you to know, if this is your first introduction to Christ, then you are blessed. If it's your second introduction, don't let the train out of the station. Catch that train and hook yourself to it. He's an advocate, our advocate, instant in the court of heaven. He's our intercessor, praying according to the will of the Father, because he and the Father are one. He can never pray amiss. He will always pray in the epicenter of the will of God. He is the epitome of the will of God. 
The word of God is the express expression, delivery, revelation of God Almighty. So if he says to you, I'm going to pray for you, you can be sure that he's going to pray according to the will of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. He's our companion, closer than the shadow. Closer than the shadow that tracks you all day. Is closer than the sun. Closer. As the sun casts its glare over you, a shadow is set. Well, he's your companion. The psalmist boasted. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Tell me why. Because he is with me. You are with me. Oh, what a joy. Hallelujah. He is with me. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. But his rod and his staff are not my boast. It is him himself. It is he himself. He walks through the valley. Have you ever known a God who will walk with you in prison? Well, I know one. I have friends who have been in prison, maximum security, and they came out believing in Jesus. Can you beat that? Jesus passed through the prison gates, went through the warders, every security check, and went and found them in their cells where they were cut off from other, other prisoners because their cases were considered to be terrible. Just like J Joseph, who was in the dungeon. Pharaoh's dungeon. That is where all Pharaoh's serious offenders are kept. Usually they are kept for death. And Joseph was kept there on a trumped up charge of adultery. A woman he didn't touch. And you know what? My God, Jesus traveled through the gates of the prison, traveled past the warders, traveled past the general prison yard, got into maximum security, and caused two other inmates to dream. And they were sad in the next day, looking for explanation. And Joseph looked at them and said, guys, you are normally boisterous. One of them used to be Pharaoh's butler. One of them used to be Pharaoh's cup bearer. And each of them said, we dreamt a dream. After persistence, I would assume. And Joseph said, tell me the dream, and I'll give you the interpretation. And they told him the dreams, and Joseph interpreted for them, to the effect that the butler would be released in a couple of days, but that his head would be taken, which means he would hang. But that the, 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 the I mean, the, the baker would hang, but the butler will be restored to his job. And he said to both of them, all of you are going to face two different scenarios. Now you, when death stares you in the face, and you remember to do one good act of mercy, remind Pharaoh that I am not who they say I am. My father is a Hebrew, lives in Canaan. I am his delight. I was sold by my brothers into slavery. If that's just the last act of good you can do. And the butler said, very well. And he turned to the baker, I mean, the, the, the baker said very well. He turned to the butler, and you, if they restore you, and the word of the Lord comes to pass, and your day of joy comes, and out of joy you want to show thanksgiving, show thanksgiving by remind, remembering me before Pharaoh, so that I can be discharged from this place. I didn't sin, I'm my father's delight. My brother sold me from Canaan. And the butler said, I surely will do. How can I forget you? May God do according to me, according to your word. Both of them were restored and they forgot Joseph. I remember Joseph. Hey. Left alone in the dungeon with the butler and the baker. The butler had to dream again. Yeah, yeah. And the Pharaoh remembered Joseph. And the butler remembered Joseph. Let me tell you about my brother Joseph. Forgotten in the dungeon by the butler and the baker. From there he cried in a prayer to the Lord I love. And the butler, he had to dream a dream again. Was the high roy that sought his son. I'm sorry, we will sing it again. Hallelujah. But it was Joseph in the dungeon, forgotten by the butler and the baker. 
God caused Pharaoh to dream a dream so that he could get an occasion because he was remembering his son. Friends, weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. When the joy comes, it will be like sudden streams in the southern desert. When the joy comes, it will be like a lie. We would stand in awe, gaping, with our eyes wide open, thinking this cannot be happening to me. Oh, but my friends, very really, it will be happening to you. His name is Bela High Roy, the God who sees me in my situation, the God who cares for me personally, the God who knows my very name, and the God that will come to save my soul. He's our companion that never leaves. He boasted, I will never leave you nor forsake you. We'll get to the scriptures later. He's our unfailing deliverer, mighty God. He's excelled at, at everything. He has excelled at prayer. He has excelled at love. He has excelled at purity. He has excelled at holiness. He has excelled at working with the Father. He has excelled at doing the will of God. The people saw him in Mark the Gospel and they said he has done all things well. What a man. He has destroyed my adversary and the terror of my soul. I admonish you if you know him, calm down. You have been too competitive like I said in the closing in the morning. We have been trained to compete. They take us up as children. They tell us begin to crawl. Everybody is crawling. What they are saying is all your age mates are crawling. They tell us get up and walk. Keep pace with your generation. They take us to school and they tell us to compete. And somebody comes first. Somebody comes second. Somebody comes last. They beat us when we don't catch up. They tell us everybody has a car now. Why don't you have a car? Everybody has a job. What they mean is your generation is already moving ahead of you. So they have built competi competition in us. Instead of us to learn to cooperate, we learn to compete against each other. And we enjoy putting each other down. Oh, what a shame. Tonight, I call you to look unto Jesus. He is author and finisher of your destiny. And he doesn't have a general fate for all of you in your age grade. No, each one of us is specifically noted. The psalmist said, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You knit me in my mother's womb fearfully and wonderfully. I'm a special child. I'm a unique child. I'm your child. Friends, he loves you and me. He loves you and me. It doesn't matter what your status is tonight. If you don't know Jesus, you are not an outcast. Because he died for the world, not for the earth. For God so loved the world, the entire world, that crucible, that mishmash, that tohu and bohu, that miasma, that, that putrid pot of all the mixes. He loves them. He loves them. And he loves you. It is for the world he gave his only begotten son. It wasn't for the church. There was no church when Jesus came. There was only a type of it. Judaism had drifted so far away from God that for 400 years the Jews had not heard thus yet the Lord between Malachi and Matthew, the birth of John the Baptist. Don't be afraid of him. He always had a plan to include you. This is the season of inclusion. This is the season of ingathering. This is the season of beating the sheaves in the field and separating the wheat from the chaff and gathering the wheat home into the banner but burning the chaff with unquenchable fire. Don't be part of the chaff. He wrote you as seed. He wrote you for grain so that you can make it into his house. Oh, he has space for you. Look at the skies as big as they are. There are more birds in the, earth, in the skies than every creeping thing upon the face of the earth. But you never see birds clash in the sky and fall down because they had an accident. There is space for all of us. Yes. Oh friends, he loves you. Trust him. Have faith in him. I've never seen anybody. And he stands out. He's a legend. Everything he says is his bond. He is bound to it. He will bring it to pass. He said, has God said it? Will he not bring it to pass? Has he torn? Will he not bind up and pour oil in? I beg you, 
His word is his bond and he cannot change. Hallelujah. And I have a news for you. This is how we ended in the afternoon. I just want to continue from there into the word tonight. There are more that are with you than they that are against you. Satan fell. What he took from heaven could not hurt heaven. It was just an infinitesimal part of heaven that he took with him. They are just foolish angels. They are fallen angels. But there are more with you. The Bible says he took a third. Just to tell you that he took a potent force. There are strong angels that were created. And they left with Satan. But it doesn't mean, not, it doesn't mean anything. Michael will put him to, in his place any day, any time. They said, and there was war in heaven. Satan has his demons and Michael has, and his angels. And he was thrust, thrust out of heaven. And his place was destroyed. So Satan is not only fallen. He's still falling, my friends. <laughs> he's falling. He is falling, my friends. He is falling. A falling man cannot do you any harm. If a person is still falling, he cannot rally because there's no standing place from which to fight you. So don't be afraid of him. He cannot launch a counter attack against you. He is fallen, but he's also still falling. He is falling before every generation. He fell before our fathers. He is fallen before us. And he will fall again before our children. He keeps falling. He has no antidote to this state of affairs. It's a marathon. Don't run like you are running a dash. It's a marathon. Take your time. Pace yourself. Every runner had to train himself with his pace. So pace yourself, my friend. And pace yourself in the spirit. The spirit already has your race. Run with it. It was Ed Moses who revolutionized athletics. He did the 400 meter huddle like nobody else had ever done. And he, he had watches that would time him. And he knew how many steps he needed to take to complete the 400 meters circuit. Ed Moses became very popular set record after record and he dominated that quarter mile that's how you need to run you don't need to run with the other athletes the way you trained if you were going to do 47 meters i mean 47 steps and be done then just do that and make sure you are keeping that you'd see ed moses run and look at his watch and everybody who knew his story knew that was what he was doing he was looking at how far he had come in how much time so he would know if he was keeping time with the world record or he was running faster than the world record pace yourself it's a marathon it's a long distance it's not a short run he saves the best for last never forget that your testimony your testimony may last long before it comes but it is because when it comes the world will stand still he saves the best for last so in the language of God there are no delays he will surely come and he will not delay because he is the on time God I said he is the on time God he is on time in Australia he is on time in China he is on time in Iri and Jaya he is on time in Java he is on time in Hawaii he is on time in Bahamas he is on, on time in Barbados he is on time when you are alive he is on time when you are dead you will not die before your time when the time comes it will be clear you have tidied everything just put your trust in him every word of God is life every word of God is a breath of life every word that comes from him the proceeding word that's what sustains he said to them in Deuteronomy that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord so he led them through the wilderness gave them manna that they didn't know and they ate bread that they had never seen before and the bread sustained them not one of them was feeble or sick not one of them lacked anything they didn't need to consult a doctor they didn't need to consult there was no pandemic or endemic or anything their clothes grew with them friends he even renewed their youth like the eagles in the wilderness just by his word his proceeding word don't isolate yourself he planted us in the earth to integrate he planted us in the earth to be part of the earth he planted us to influence the earth he didn't plant us in the earth for nothing stop looking far away for deliverance your salvation is near nearer than when you, you first believed 
Count the cost, like I said. I will not overemphasize it. Count the cost of everything you want to do. Be sure that before you take a step, you've counted the cost. Someone listened to me yesterday, a sister of mine, and this evening as we were chatting, chatting and playing, she said to me, it's not, it's not my fault. It was you that chose to be born in our family. And so we are, we are family now. You can't do anything with me. I, 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 you should have counted the cost before coming. And we all had a great hilarious laugh because that's the truth. Count the cost. Don't declare anybody your friend till you have counted the cost. In counting the cost, study them. And then when you know who they are, what they carry, and you see that you can join yourself in affinity with them, then go ahead and do so. But don't come back later saying, had I known. You had every chance to count the cost. Hallelujah. It is possible in counting the cost for you to see the end from the beginning. Jesus actually recommended it, that we should travel to our cemetery, our great graveyard. We should travel to the final service and then listen to what people will be saying or determine what people will say about us before we come and run the race. See, a real champion runs a 100 meter race thousands of times in his uh, uh, training camp, beating the record or matching the world record before he comes to the competition. So because he has run it to and fro several times, he already knows how he's going to run to win. So also Jesus told of his death. Three times he prophesied, I'm going to die and be killed by the Jews. They are conspiring against me already. And he told them the city, the location will be Jerusalem. I will be crucified outside of the gates. But it is necessary. This is what was written concerning me. This is what was foretold of me. And when I am killed, I would be raised again on the third day by the spirit of holiness. And I will be declared to be the son of power and with glory. The son of God with power and glory. I will be seated on the majesty on high at the right hand of his throne. And then I will pour out the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Father. You see, he wasn't the promise of the Father. He was only the promise as a gateway. A gateway to bring us to the Holy Spirit. Of whom we have much to say. Time will fail us, fail us today. But I want you to lift up your eyes tonight. Behold the Holy Ghost. When you hear the word behold, it means see. See the Holy Ghost. He's our builder. He is the one that builds. And the builders build in vain except he builds with them. He is our finisher. He is Alpha. He is Omega. He is our finisher. Because he is spirit, he cannot lie. He is not partial to anybody. If you do well like they told Cain, wouldn't God approve of you if thou doest well? The Holy Spirit is the spirit of promise. He is the Holy Spirit. He is the unfailing spirit. Because he is spirit, he does not grow weary. Neither does he get tired. He doesn't slumber. Neither does he blink and wink. No, 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 no. He is always awake. His strength is ever renewed. He is the refreshing spirit. He was the cloud by day. He was the fire by night. He is the light of the world. He is clothed in darkness and pillars of clouds. He has to shield himself from men because he has been bound by prophecy. I will not continually strive with, with man. Be assured, he will come and save you. Be assured, he will give to you what he said in the hour of need. Be assured, he is dependable, totally reliable and trustworthy. Be assured, he has gone ahead of you, but he is behind you, he is over you, and he is under you. So in him you live and move and have your being. Right now I see new lands emerging. Nations are giving up. But other nations are rising in faith. The nations that used to be at the forefront of so-called faith will pale into insignificance. I see Africa, I see Nigeria leading in the restoration. Indeed, I've already heard the sounds of jealousy. In China, I hear that we are being expelled out of homes and hotels, that our money is, is, is nothing, that we are not humans. And I, I warn you, China, because you are, you are just doing what you needed to do to the messianic world. Africa and Nigeria, they will lead in this restoration. Indeed, nations will come to settle their disputes in Nigeria. Submit to others so that you don't run alone. Don't run alone. China, it is time for you to open up. 
Say what really happened. If there is anything you need to tell the world, tell the world. And the nations of the earth should be wary of movements of Chinese people up and down coming into our communities. You should be wary until we understand what the situation is. We're not going to die. We will live. We will not perish. The hand of the Lord is lifted up to save. Every time there is terror, every time there is trauma, every time there is oppression, there in the midst is Jesus. He is there saving. So I don't want you to panic. I'm not preaching racism. I'm just saying that we should be careful. God has a prophetic destiny for our nation and we must guard it. Our time has come. Don't let anybody deceive you. In the twinkling of an eye, sudden streams in the desert, there will be reformations, restoration, resets and restarts. Stop using people, I beg you. Don't use anybody. You are totally kitted for the assignment of your life. You didn't start your life by accident. Everything you need has been supplied. And when God does it, you will realize he is the on-time God. He's not by mistake. Uh, uh, he's not going to make a mistake in your life. He has never made a mistake before. And he's not about to start with you. Hallelujah. God. Don't use men as stepping stones. Whether you call them fathers or sons, it's a lie. Relate with all men. Honor the brotherhood. Fear God. Love the brethren. Love them. Don't use them. There's no, nothing like a stepping stone. Jesus is every stone you need. He's your stepping stone. He's your living stone. He's your judgment stone. He's your precious cornerstone. He's your capstone. He's the bright and the morning star. He's your stone. Step on him and get to your own destination. There's a plan for you. That's why he told your father and your mother to raise you up in the way you should go. What he expected them to do was to find out from him what kind of fellow you were supposed to be so they can train you in accordance with this word of knowledge. Hallelujah. Praise God. I said hallelujah. Praise God. I don't need any stepping stones. Say it. My stepping stone, my living stone, my precious stone, my chief corner stone, my bright and morning star. He will bring me to my destination. I am unique, peculiar, a royal priesthood, a special person. I was fabricated by God in a secret and a dark place where no eye could access. Before my mother knew me, he had called me by name and separated me to be his prophet, his ambassador in the earth. Hallelujah, somebody. This is true of Canadians. This is true of Nigerians. This is true of Swahili people. This is true of Swaziland people. This is true of Madagascan people. This is true of English people. I want you to heal from hurts and wounds. He is faithful. Heal from hurts and wounds. Keep, don't keep on carrying those wounds. They are becoming septic. They are already oozing out with, with poison. They would pollute your entire system. Heal in the name of Jesus Amen. is a commandment. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. And you to heal in the name of Jesus. Amen. Everything that has been done against you, even if you think that you are purely harmless and that everybody did evil against you, forgive them. The Bible says, forgive those who despitefully use you. It says, if you forgive only your friends, what good is there? So forgive those who use you despitefully. Forgive them. Be faithful in another one's man's work and you will be built up. That's the promise of God. He said that in Job. That if you are faithful over another man's work, he actually promises that you will be built up. When he says you will be built up, what he means, my friend Eric, is, not, is that you're not going to have to build yourself. So another will build you up. Hallelujah. And that is the hope and patience of the sons of God. Did you hear what I'm saying? Yes, it's the hope and the patience of the sons of God. You will be built up. Be faithful. Be faithful in another man's. Because while you are being faithful, you are training and training and training and training. And you are acquiring expertise. You are acquiring experience. You are acquiring all kinds of know-how and skill. And they would help you in the time of need. 
Hear what he says about Jesus in Psalm 68 verse 18. You have ascended up on high. You have led captivity captive. You have received gifts amongst men. Even from the rebellious. That the Lord God might dwell there. Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits. The God of our salvation. Selah. Our God is the God of salvation. And, the God, and to God the Lord belong escapes from death. But God will wound the head of his enemies, the hairy scalp of the one who still goes on in his trespasses. To him belongs escapes from death. You are one of those who have escaped from death. Hallelujah. And you belong to him. Hallelujah. Why don't you lift up your hand wherever you are and be numbered amongst those who have escaped from death. You have run from death and you have found the living fountain. He is the fountain of life. Hallelujah. So lift up your eyes tonight. I have a word from you, for, you, for you from God. That your salvation is nearer than when you first believed. Lift up, lift up your eyes. Don't look down anymore. Don't be calculating stories of coronavirus. The coronavirus pandemic is gone. I have news for you tonight. Do, and do this knowing the time. That now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. See, he's telling you the night is already far spent. That a new day is already at hand. He's telling you that. Therefore let us cast off the works of darkness. Let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day. Not in revelry and drunkenness. Not in lewdness and lust. Not in strife and envy. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. Romans chapter 13 verse 11. That our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. That the night is already far spent. It is God's verdict on this 16th day of April. Corona that night is already far spent. It has no poison anymore. It is finished. It is a spent force. God declares it. That the day is already at hand. So rise up and lift up your head. Looking for the rising of the sun. In 1 Samuel chapter 9 verse 19. Saul the son of Kish went out to look for donkeys. And when he got out into the fields. After several days they had not found the donkey. And he went in to see the prophet Samuel. And while he was discussing with the, the prophet. And saying hello seer how are you? The seer said to him. Come and stay the night in my house. You will eat with me today and tomorrow you will head off. Because the Lord has sent you to meet me. So I can give you a message. Moreover, concerning the donkeys. They have already been found. And now your father is looking for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's a great news for me. You know what that tells me? It tells me that the father has already dealt with Corona. Now he's worried about me. He wants me to return home. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> he wants me. The donkeys have been found. Your father is now worried about you. He's worried about you because there's a harvest. You were designed for such a time as this. He doesn't want you to miss out. He wants you to get your portion. So he's worried that you get back on time. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. And you know what Saul said? Said, Saul said to him every fear we reeled in the afternoon Saul said to him I come from the smallest tribe my father's house is the smallest in Benjamin I am the least amongst my father's brethren I don't have anything to show for it are you sure you are talking to the right person why are you talking to me like this and God is no respecter of persons listen to me corona has been dealt with your prayers have been answered you don't even need to pray any longer to stop corona Except you want to thank God. But now, the greatest recruiting company on earth, the only recruiting company, is looking for workers to recruit. Hallelujah. There's a manhunt for you. All the forces of heaven, they are hunting for you. Like the police is hunting for an escaped convict. There's a manhunt with animals, with canines, with uh, horse units. Every unit has been deployed. They must find you. They have an instruction. Find the lost and restore them to my kingdom. It is the time God has set for you to be honored. He knows you. He formed you to be part of this killer squad. This highly trained squad. This crack troops. And he does not gather the troops 
with a big blast to gather all of them at once. No, he gathers them one man at a time. Make up your mind today. Decide to be part of his army. Do not stay in the camp of darkness. He wants you and you know that. In Jeremiah chapter 5, hear what he says in verse 1. Run to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem. See now and know. Seek in our open places. If you can find a man. He's just looking for a man. God is patient. Time is on his side. He wants his company to assemble. But one man at a time. He's going to reap the entire earth. One wheat, one blade of wheat at a time. One blade of grass at a time. When he rains, he rains water. And he drenches every grass at the same time. When he rains dew, the dew falls on every one blade of grass. So not a blade of grass would call him unfaithful. Friends, if he worries about the blades of grasses, which your mower comes to cut, how much more you? If there is anyone who executes judgment, who seeks the truth, sir, even if you have not done well, just position yourself as a seeker of the truth. Tell Jesus, say, here am I, sir. I am your daughter. I am your son. I declare myself today a seeker of the truth. Lead me to the truth, the way, and the life. Bring me to custodians of this truth, and let me hang out with them. And I will pardon her, says the Lord. Though they say, as the Lord lives, surely they swear falsely. God says he will pardon you. What are you waiting for? He's recruiting you into the army. Some of you are just getting saved, but you're already part of the army. Some of you were saved, but fear and the doctrines of men and the lies and deceptions of Satan, they paralyzed you. But now your liberty is come. Victory is come. My friends, take him by the, by the hands. In verse 14 of Jeremiah 5, hear what he says. Therefore thus says the Lord God of hosts, because you speak this word, behold, I will make my words in your mouth fire, and this people would, and it shall devour them. Why? God called Jeremiah, and Jeremiah proceeded to tell God that he's not competent, and his only criteria of incompetence was that he was too young. And the Lord said to him, okay, if that's the case, now what I've done is, my word in your mouth will be fire, and they that live, listen to you like dry stubble. When these two meet, a conflagration breaks forth. This verse of scripture, the Lord used in calling me a few years ago. He told me to go, and everywhere I've gone, my words have fallen like fire, and the people have been kindled like dry stubble. His word is true. In Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 3 to 4, he gives you matching orders tonight. See, lift up your eyes means stop looking down at the problem, get up and be the solution. That's what he means. He says, break up your fallow ground, and do not sow among stones. Circumcise yourselves to the Lord and take away the foreskins of your heart. You men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my fury come forth like fire and burn so that no one can quench it because of the evil of your doings. Failing to match up with God's demand is going to put you in a place of jeopardy. You are going to become a victim of his fiery glance. And I told you when he looks at you, it is leap, flames of fire leaping out. And he burns everything before him. Lift up your eyes today. How do you lift up your eyes, you may ask me. Circumcise your heart. Wash your hands from iniquity. Take away the perverse thing from your mouth. Circumcise your eyes that they see no evil. Your ears that they hear no evil. Your heart that it contemplates no evil. Prepare yourself for him according to his word. His word is in your hands. Take time to study it. Matthew chapter 5 says, Blessed are the poor in spirit. So if you are poor in spirit means you need him. He will pour his Holy Spirit to you. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst. They shall be filled. He will satisfy you. Hallelujah. That is how to get yourself ready. Lift up your eyes. Your salvation is nearer than when you first believed. In Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4, he said to him, The word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Can you imagine that? Before you reached mama's womb, God already knew you. Oh my goodness, that is cause for joy. Your mother is not the first to know you. Your father is not the first to know you. 
The doctor that brought you out in the CS operation was not the first to know you. God knew you before you reached the womb. Before there was any connection between your seed and the placenta, God had already known you. And he didn't just know you like that. Before you were born, he sanctified you. My goodness. He knew you and then poured his oil upon you, laid his hands upon you, predetermined your end. And I'm announcing to you as the prophet of God, your end. Your end is to be enlisted in his army. What you are doing is good, but it's not good enough. Get up and run. There is time no longer. Run in the army. Be aware that you are part of a company. Ask the Lord to decipher that company, their characteristics, their nature, and he will show it to you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations before you were born. Then I said to the Lord, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am but a youth. Then the Lord said to me, Do not say I am a youth, for you shall go to all to whom I send you. I said, You will go to all to whom he sends you. I said, You will go to all to whom he sends you. Starting from Jerusalem, all Judea, Samaria, the uttermost parts of the earth. You will go to all to whom he sent you. I set you free tonight from being a local champion. Amen. You are a global star. Amen. God sent you for all seasons, all generations, all nations, and the ends of the earth. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. You are no more able to speak nonsense. Your tongue has been arrested by God. There is a burden of, of testimony laid upon your tongue. You would only sp speak about your God. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Do not be afraid of their faces. Tonight I cast out fear from my heart. I cast out fear from my path. I cast out fear from my eyes. I cast out fear from my ears. Everything I see and hear, no matter how threatening they look, I cast out fear. I see only what the Lord says about me. He says, I'll speak to all to whom he sent me, and so shall it be in Jesus' name. I hear why he says so. For I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Somebody should shout in their house. Hallelujah. Then the Lord stretched forth his hand and touched my mouth. He did this for Isaiah. He's doing this for Jeremiah. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. And now I put God's words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations. Not one nation. Nations. Disciple the nations. Over the kingdoms. Not one kingdom. So don't be satisfied. You have, you have succeeded. But the success is nothing. Cast it off. Don't put your eyes there. Get up and move on. There is still new lands to conquer. There are still new places. There is fresh glory waiting for you. There is new wine for the new day. There is fresh oil. My friends, don't die with yesterday's stale bread. Get out and gather manna for today. Start afresh. Break forth on every side. You break forth on every side. You are a river in full flood. You are a dam overloaded. I've sent you over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build, and to plant. He has opened an onslaught on Satan. You see, four times he was dealing with the kingdom, rooting out, pulling down, destroying, and throwing down. He has opened out wave after wave of destructions on the kingdom of darkness. Darkness, hear the word of the Lord. Your tenure is finished in this generation. You meant for evil with the coronavirus. But now you are biting your finger knowing that if you had known, you would not have brought him. We know that this thing was manufactured. It was concocted. We know that evil forces are trying to take advantage of it all over the world. We don't deny the existence of the virus. We know that evil men concocted a plot. But that plot has failed woefully. Yeah. Corona, those who created you are regretting that they created you. Yeah. They have brought a new cohesion. They have brought a new hallelujah. They have put a new song in our mouth. They have given us a new reason for revival. They have given us a reason now for hope, for restoration. Hallelujah. He destroyed the kingdom of darkness to the power of four and then he began to rebuild and plant. 
just twice. That is to tell you, he's opened up an onslaught on hell and he's destroying her powers completely. Every connection between you and hell, every connection to seduction, every connection to lust, every connection to perversion, every conne connection to corruption, now is hereby burnt by the fire of the Holy Spirit. You are free, free to represent him, free to be a model, a model and a pattern in words, in thoughts, in charity, in teaching, Amen. in doctrine, Amen. in conduct. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So he says, go ye into all the earth and make disciples of every nation. Right there, it is time to lift up your eyes. When he says go, he's already said, that's why he says, he says lift up your eyes. When you want to go on a journey, you stand up and you lift up your eyes and face the road. You know the direction. The Bible says that Jesus' face was set as a flint to go to Jerusalem, for he knew his time had come. And he was passing through Jericho. But his face was set. He knew the path pathway to go. And then a man was shouting, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And he stopped and said, bring him here. See, he could not turn aside because he had set up his face as a flint. He will not turn aside. You need to lift up your face. Lift up your eyes. Your salvation is nearer than when you first believed. Lift up your eyes and see the journey that is set before you. And begin to walk on that pathway. Go ye into all the world. Hear the way Matthew puts it. I love it. Matthew and Mark. They gave me this account so beautifully. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, first of all, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. My God, what a claim. What a testament. My God, no prophet has ever said that. No apostle has ever said that. No manzo has ever declared that. No caliph will ever declare it. No ambassador will ever say this. These words are spoken once and for all. All authority and all power is given once and for all. Hallelujah. I said all authority and all power can only be given once and for all. All authority and all power has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Hallelujah. Hey, somebody help me. He said this to Jeremiah. He told him, every word that I have commanded you to speak, you will speak it. And everyone that hears you will catch fire and burn. They would burn. They would burn completely. They will catch fire and be ignited. Because my word in your mouth is as fire. But the people that hear you will be as dry stubble. From now on, do not be afraid that the people will reject you. Rather, why don't you contemplate that they might just behave the way the word of God said. Oh my word. I see a flow. In Nigeria, we use the slang flow to mean that things are happening and swiftly. I see a flow. Every word you speak, every time you stand up, I see you prospering in the things that God has called you to do. And you will prosper in winning souls. You will prosper in training disciples. You will prosper in raising up men, sons and daughters. None of your company will be feeble. In the day in which the Lord brought them out of Egypt, they were not sick, neither were they feeble. I want you to listen to Mark's account in Mark 16, 15. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. Oh, hallelujah. He has put the power of life and death in your mouth. That when you speak, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. Can you imagine? But he who does not believe will be condemned. The first day I saw this, the Lord made me to begin a fast of words. That time I kept quiet for days. I was contemplating the words I was speaking. I made sure that I only spoke that which was wholesome. Because I knew that if, it, if what he said is true, and I know it is true, then it means that with my mouth I can condemn and destroy, and with my mouth I can make alive. And I wanted to only be known as a life-giving spirit. Hear me guys, fast evil words sanctify your mouth and begin to speak only that which is wholesome and acceptable because in a day when you sought him you will find him and everybody who comes to you will be saved rather than condemned and these signs will follow those who believe these signs are not following you the preacher 
They are following those who believe. They are not following you, the preacher. It is assumed you have already got this in your life. But all who believe in you, you will observe that they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. Amen. Friends, these are the signs. So when you observe your congregation, when you observe your converts speaking with other tongues because you got them filled with the Holy Ghost, when you observe your converts picking up serpents accidentally and they are not hurt, when you observe your com com converts accidentally drinking poison but it doesn't hurt them, then know that you are on the path of raising lives and the work that Jesus has given you. If you see your congregation, even if they are a million strong, if they are not speaking with other tongues and they are not, they are not um, casting out devils and they are not taking up serpents and escaping and they are not bringing testimonies of poison that lost its power, then know that you are out of course and you need to get Jesus. It says to by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. These are the signs we want to see in our congregations. If you do your retreat properly, indeed your retreat when you are coming out of it will announce you. Because those that recovered from sickness will be following you shouting hallelujah. Those that were saved and filled with uh, the Holy Spirit, they will be accompanying you shouting hallelujah. Listen to me. That's the word of the Lord for you. That the season that is coming is a season of announcements. Lift up your eyes. How do you want to lift up your eyes? Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your might and with all your strength. And his, 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 your neighbor love as well. That's what the Lord says. That's the sign of lifting up your eyes. Or that's how to lift up your eyes. He says, lift up your eyes. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your might in this season. What you have done before was good, but you need to do more now. You need to do more now. You need to do, do more now. Look at Psalms 149. I loved it so, so, so much that I decided to read the whole psalm for you. Praise to God for his salvation and judgment. Can somebody say amen? amen. Praise the Lord. Say amen. amen. Sing to the Lord a new song. Amen. And his praise in the assembly of saints. Amen. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Amen. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Amen. Let them praise his name with the dance. Amen. Let them sing praises to him with the timbrel and harp. Amen. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. Amen. Hallelujah. He will beautify the humble with salvation. Amen. Let the, sons, the saints be joyful in glory. Amen. Let them sing aloud on their beds. Amen. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. Amen. And a two-edged sword in their hand. Amen. To execute vengeance on the nations. Amen. And punishments on the peoples. Amen. To bind their kings with chains. Amen. And their nobles with fetters of iron. Amen. Can I hear you say amen? amen? To execute on them the written judgment. Amen. This honor has been set aside for all his saints. Amen. Praise God! Praise God. Hallelujah. The deceptions of Satan, they have been destroyed. His deceptions have been brought down. Every barricade he put has been cracked. No nation is impregnable anymore. After the coronavirus, nation will need nation. Clan will need clan. Tribe will need tribe. Man will need man. Families will need families. So exploit it. Don't think that after corona there will be a barricade. People have said, oh, if you don't have a vaccine, you won't travel. It's a lie. It's not time. No nation can shut down. This corona has broken the hearts of nations. Corona has humbled the hearts of nations. The best of nations leaders have been to hospital for corona. So have no fear. God has already spoken. The cracks are there. They are telling signs of the ends of kingdoms and empires. But they are also telling the signs of the rise of Zion. The fall of one is the rise of another. Have no fear. Babylon is fallen. But Zion's time has come. We are all united under one banner. We are all united under one Lord. We are all united under one hope. We are all united under one baptism. 
So beat your plowshares into spares and your pruning, pruning hooks into, into swords. Let the weak say, I am strong. Amen. Hear that proclamation in Joel. Joel in chapter 3 verse 9. Proclaim this among the nations. Prepare for, the, for war. I'm begging you to gather. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Lift up your eyes. Beat your plowshares into swords. Your pruning hooks into spears. It's no more time for business. It's no more time for gathering. It is time for you to enlist in the army. Every instrument you use today for business, beat it into a war instrument. Someone called me and said to me, thank you for the messages you preach. I perceive that this is why God raised me. Everything I do is kingdom. There is nothing secular in me and spiritual in me. Everything I do is kingdom. I am sold out to him. Powerful words to hear. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble and come all you nations. Gather together all around. Cause your mighty ones to go down there. O oh Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The good hand of the Lord was upon me. That's what Nehemiah said. Nehemiah said in chapter 2 verse 7. If it pleases the king, let letters be given to me for the governors of the region beyond the river. That they must permit me to pass through till I come to Judah. And a letter to Asaf, the keeper of the king's forest. That he must give me timber to make beams for the gates of the citadel. Which pertains to the temple. For the city wall and for the house that I will occupy. And the king granted them to me according to the good hand of my God that was upon me. Friends, the good hand of God is upon you now. Amen. I said the good hand is upon you now. Amen. Hallelujah. God. Then I said to them in verse 17 of chapter 2, you see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lies waste and its gates are burnt with fire. Come and let us build the wall of Jerusalem that we may no longer be a reproach. And I told them of the hand of my God which had been good upon me and also of the king's words that he had spoken to me. So they said, so let us rise up and build. Then they set their hands on this good work. It's a good work. It's a good work because the hand of the Lord, the good hand of the Lord is upon you. Hallelujah. Then in verse 19, Tobiah, I mean Sambalat the Horonite and Tobiah the Ammonite and Gesem the Arab, they laughed at us and despised us. I want to tell you, lift up your eyes, lift up your head, go prepare for war, beat all your business tools, beat them back into war weapons. Trim off everything of imminent failure that men have risen up to do the greatest acts. Hallelujah. Praise God. So don't be worried about criticism. Endure it like a good soldier. You've been raised for it. Look at what Psalms 104 verse 24 says. Oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your possessions. The great, this great and wide sea, in which are innumerable th teeming things, living things both small and great. There the ships sail about. There is that Leviathan, which you have made to play there. These all wait for you, that you may give them their food in due season. What you give them, they gather in. You open your hand, they are filled with good. That's the hand of the Lord. The hand of the Lord filled, feeds every fish in the sea, feeds every bird in the air, feeds every creeping thing on the earth, free, feeds every human being, 7.2 or 3 billion of them. He feeds them daily, whether they get a square meal or three square meals, whatever, he feeds them and he sustains them. That's how great his hand is. Praise Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise when he opens his hands, everyone is filled with good. Open your hand, O God, upon me. As you said in Nehemiah, I received the good hand of the Lord upon my head. I received the good hand of the Lord upon my life. I received the good hand of the Lord upon my way. I received the good hand of the Lord with strangers. I received the good hand of the Lord from family. Friends, these are new days that are upon us. Hallelujah. 
So in 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 8, he says, I desire that when men gather in church, they should lift up holy hands. We have the same hands as the hands of the Lord. These hands that are set before you, if you may kindly stretch your hands before you, these hands are blessed. They are the hands of God. You lay them on the sick, they shall recover. You lay them on that which is dislocated and it will be relocated. You lay them on the hands of anything ruptured and it will be healed. Out of your hands flow rivers of butter. That's the hiding place of God's creative power. Creative miracles will follow you yes. as you go by faith on your street. Don't seek attention. Attention will bring pressure. Just do what he asks you to do in a closet and he will induce his and exalt you. Oh, he wants that men will lift up holy hands and that women will dress modestly with modest apparel, with propriety and moderation, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly clothing, but which is proper for women who profess godliness with good works. In the day of his power, let me tell you, the people will be willing. I took time to read a whole psalm, Psalms 110. Hallelujah. The Lord said to my Lord, the Lord God is saying to you, like he said to Jesus, sit at my right hand. Sit where I've planted you. Sit doesn't mean sitting down on a chair. Sit means be focused on the assignment I've given you. If you continue with my work, see what I will do. I will make your enemies your footstool. I will send the rod of your strength out of you, Zion. I will give you a command to rule in the midst of your enemies. Your people will willingly volunteer in the day of your power, in the beauties of holiness, from the womb of the morning. You will receive the dew of your youth. Amen. The Lord has sworn and he will not relent. You are a priest forever. Amen. According to the order of Melchizedek. According to the order of an endless life. Amen. The Lord is at your right hand. He shall execute kings in the day of his wrath. Amen. The days of his wrath is the day when you make up your mind to do his work. As you do his work, he will beat down the gods of rent. He will beat down the gods of debt. He will beat down the gods of, of, of loneliness, of lack, of separation, of discontent, of despair, of depression. He will elevate you up upon the wings of an eagle. In Psalms 2, he says in verse 4, He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. Then he shall speak to them in his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, Say, the Lord has said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. He has made you governor amongst the nations. In Psalm 22, see what he says. In closing, from verse 27, All the ends of the world shall remember and turn to the Lord. This is the hour, my friends. As the coronavirus day is passing, that's how all the ends of the earth are turning to seek him. And all the families of the nations shall worship before you. If you guys will go, if you friends will go, friend, if you will go, you will see the nations turn and receive him. For the kingdom is the Lord's and the government is his. He rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth shall eat and worship. Prosper in his word. Prosper in his will. Prosper in his direction. Let him teach you. You will eat and you will worship. All those who go down to the dust shall bow before him. Even he who cannot keep himself alive, a posterity shall serve him. It will be recounted of the Lord to the next generation. So friends, lift up your heads. The hand of the Lord, the hand of the Lord, the hand of the Lord is upon you. Lift up your head in victory. The hand of the Lord is upon you. He said to them when he lifted up that brazen serpent in the wilderness, look at the serpent and live. That serpent on the tree had power. Looking at it had power to destroy the pain of a snake bite and to follow the poison in your system and liquidate it. So look and live. I will say to you, look and live. 
Lift up your head. Your salvation is here now. Lift up your eyes. Lift up your hands. Hands that are free from guile. Hands that are free from bitterness. Hands that are free from perversion. Why do you want to perish in the way before your time? The hand of the Lord. The hand of the Lord. The hand that created the heavens and the earth. The hand that parted the sea, dried the ground and froze the waters and caused his children to go. The hand that brought them out of the strong and an outstretched arm. All of those things should not provoke you to jealousy against Israel. They should rather make you love the Lord. That if he is the God who did this, then how much more will he do for you? Rahab was wise. She waited to negotiate her escape. You be wise. Lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes. I said lift up your eyes. The good hand of the Lord is upon you. He is upon you. He is upon you. The good hand of the Lord is upon you. Is upon you for good, for good, for good until the ends of the earth. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Yes, make up your mind. Don't say I'm young. He formed you and he called you and sanctified you and separated you. Bow the knee, worship him, honor him, hallow him. He's in the midst of his people. His word falling on us is like rain and it's falling like dew. Ha <laughs> ha! Hallelujah! May God stop Rekatebunimati Zabala. Zabala. Zabala Stiga. From Mexico to Bolivia. From Peru to Chile. From America to England. From England to Germany. From Germany to Russia. The train is moving to Uzbekistan. To Afghanistan. To Pakistan. To India. To Nepal. The train is moving to Singapore. To Hong Kong. To Taiwan to Macau. No nation will lord it over another. The dominion was given only for man over creation. God is the king of all. God is the king of all. God is the king of all. It's a new day. Lift up your eyes. Your salvation is here. Corona is over. The Father is looking for you. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. I say hello. Hello. Holy Zion. Great things are spoken concerning you. Yeah. And yes. Hear what he says. You are beautiful for every situation. No matter what they say. You are Zion, the city of the living God. Yeah. And yes. Let me tell you now. You see, he, the Lord, he loves the gates of Zion, the church. More than all the dwellings of Jacob. Yeah. No wonder he says in the word of God. That he will establish you with power and glory. Yes, he will. The zeal of the Lord shall perform this now. And his every word. And his every word. I beg you wipe away your tears. In the day of his power. Oh, oh the people will be willing. Yeah, yeah. Hear what I say, yeah. In the day of his power, let me hear you join with me. The people will be willing. No. Hear what I say, let me give you an advice. You see, he, it's not by power nor by might, yeah. But by my spirit seeth the Lord, yeah, and yes, hear what I say. This race is not to the swiftest, no, 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 no. Neither is the battle to the very strong, yeah. So who will receive the crown of life? Let me tell you now. It's to him that overcometh. 
surely shall receive a crown of life. Yes, and yes, let me tell you why. Because by his strength, by his strength shall no man prevail. The Lord himself is the builder of the city, holy and mighty, holy and mighty, in his glorious estate, in the day of his power. The people will be willing, yeah, yes, they will be willing, oh, no, 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 in the day. Of his power, let me hear you say, the people will be willing. The entire earth is willing. Those of you in England, get out, win your streets for Christ. Those of you in Italy, kneel down and weep. Weep between the altar and the porch. Ask God to remember your land and forgive her iniquity. Tell him you are the representation of the 7,000 that haven't yet bowed the knee. Adopt the sins of your nations. Libya, Syria, Spain, Germany, Austria, Switzerland, Bulgaria, Lithuania, Russia, Georgia, Ukraine, Poland, Iran, Iraq. None of you is an outcast. It's a lie. I know Satan has brought a deception. He has used biblical prophets to begin to uh, profile nations, to say the Antichrist is going to come from here and there. And that's why they have excluded you from the plan of God. Today God has included you. He's raising missionaries with a clear agenda to come to you. Your sons and your daughters will see the light and they will walk in the light and they will be ambassadors of the light. Russia is not the land where the Antichrist will come from. Before the Antichrist, Christ will come. Christ will come out of China. Christ will come out of Russia. Christ will come out of Iran. Christ will come out of North and South Yemen. Christ will come out of North Korea. Even as he came out of South Korea. Listen, my friends in the North, beat your swords into plowshares. Whilst others are going to war, your war is peace. Your war is the pursuit of peace. Don't go to war. The South is waiting to be a blessing to you. She has been eaten up with the heart of Christ. That is one thing you have not factored into the, neg the negatives. Hallelujah. Praise America is not the devil. She is not the great Satan. Libya is not forsaken. Morocco is not lost. Tunisia, Algeria, Mali, Mauritania, Niger. Beyond the resources we have and lack, we are a people, the people of God. And all of you that are listening to me tonight, receive your clear mandate. Receive your clear mandate. Every day wake up in prayer for one nation. One nation on earth. That's how you make your heart fertile for God to say to you, that's the nation. Go to her. I see your feet running. I see you with wings. Swift, Daniel said, whilst I was praying, I saw the angel Gabriel being caused to fly swiftly towards me. I receive speed for you. And swift Swiftness. Oh, Father, thank you. thank you. You have helped me to declare this word tonight. I bless you. It's not a gimmick. It's not. It's not. Thai, thank you. Say, come, yaba, num padi la bonamato, say, ah, hallelujah. I give you the thanks and I give you praise with all of my heart singing ah, hallelujah Eya mo kanya bo men zili bana mota sole kamota bain ah hallelujah Elia lo mana bo sanye Ah, hallelujah Benyana kumane tunsaili Ah, hallelujah 
draw near, draw near, draw near, my brother and sister. Your salvation is closer than when you first believed. Draw near, draw near, and lift up your head, singing, ah, ah, hallelujah. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. We'll meet again in the morning at 10 o'clock, Jesus' time. Bless you, my brothers.